Is the Bible a book of fables? We hear this quite a lot, not only from critics, but also from the average person on the street. A 2017 Gallup poll indicated that 26% of Americans view the Bible as a book of fables, legends, history, and moral precepts recorded by man. Well, there's a lot packed into that definition, but we're going to focus on just one of those categories. So, what is a fable? Well, a fable is a story that teaches some kind of lesson and typically involves actors who are non-human. They're animals or inanimate objects that are anthropomorphized. That is, they're given human characteristics, maybe like what you'd expect in a Disney movie. Hi everyone, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. But these stories were intended to communicate moral lessons. Well, you're probably familiar with Aesop's fables. Aesop was a storyteller in the 6th century BC. Scholars aren't quite sure what to make of his existence because none of his writings have survived. However, a number of stories were collected and attributed to him, and you've probably heard of some of them. You have stories like the tortoise and the hare, which gives us the lesson, slow and steady wins the race. You've got the fox and the crow, which warns against listening to flattery. Then there's the lion and the mouse, which teaches that no one is so great that he cannot be helped by someone less powerful. Even earlier examples of fable appear in the ancient Near East, dating as early as the 3rd millennium BC. One example is the Babylonian composition, Dispute Between the Tamarisk and the Date Palm, in which these two trees argue over which one of them is greater. Fables are arguably one of the most misunderstood literary genres, especially when it comes to biblical criticism. Most people seem to think that a fable is primarily a false story. And because it's a false story, and the Bible is supposedly filled with false stories, then the Bible must be full of fables. Even intelligent critics make this very basic mistake. The late Christopher Hitchens, who had a brilliant mind, claimed that the Bible and other religious texts were merely transparent fables. But fables aren't fictional stories primarily. They're stories created with the purpose of communicating a moral lesson. Because animals, plants, and inanimate objects serve as the main characters and behave like human beings, these stories clearly aren't meant to be taken literally. Fables are closely related to other forms of wisdom literature, though. They resemble Jesus' parables in the New Testament, although there are some noteworthy differences between them. Parables were used for illustrative purposes and have human actors instead of anthropomorphized animals, plants, and objects. But both of them do teach lessons. The Bible does contain at least two fables. These are found in Judges chapter 9 and 2 Kings chapter 14. The first one, and the more famous of the two, is told by Jotham, the youngest son of Gideon, who compares his half-brother Abimelech to a thorn bush. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance, by which gods and men are honored, and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit, and go hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men, and Go hold sway over the trees. Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let the fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The point of the story here was to warn the people about the problems of kingship, but also about how dangerous Abimelech could be. And he is. He murders his brothers. He is belligerent, defiant, and arrogant. He's the cause of a great deal of conflict and suffering and will ultimately die a violent death. Jotham uses a fable to communicate these truths. The other fable in 2 Kings chapter 14 is told by Jehoash, king of Israel. King Amaziah of Judah is essentially trying to pick a fight with him and with the northern kingdom, and this is how Jehoash responds. A thistle on Lebanon sent to a cedar on Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son for a wife. And a wild beast of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. 
Jehoash tells this very short fable in which he compares Amaziah of Judah to a thistle and describes himself as a mighty cedar tree. He's basically using this story to warn Amaziah about the consequences of picking a fight with someone stronger than him. So, when we look closely at these two fables, they sound a lot different than what biblical critics mean when they use the word. Critics often say that the Bible is full of fables by which they seem to mean it's full of all kinds of ridiculous stories. But that is extremely inaccurate and incredibly misleading. Now remember, what do fables do? They teach a lesson. Jotham's fable warns about the inherent problems of kingship and describes his brother as a dangerous person. Both of these things are true. Jehoash's fable warns about what could happen if you go around picking fights with other people. That's actually really good advice. That's exactly the kind of information these stories were intended to communicate. The number of fables in the Bible is actually very small. You can count them on one hand. And they were designed to teach a lesson, not to be understood literally. So, the Bible does have fables. And that has absolutely nothing to do with whether it's historically reliable or not.